In a letter of the Belgian parliament this week, Iraq's government has insisted that it will keep its deadline to close Ashraf on 31 December. The foreign minister of Belgium, Steven van Akkeren, who was speaking in the Senate last week, has declared his opposition to this impossible deadline as neither reasonable nor realistic. Now, on behalf of the majority of the Belgian MPs and senators who have signed declarations in support of Ashraf, I call on the United Nations Secretary General and his representative, Mr. Martin Kobler, to declare their clear opposition to the forcible displacements of Ashraf residents inside Iraq and the deadline. They could lead to a brutal massacre of the residents. If this happens, the residents of Ashraf have the right to resist because they prefer to die in Ashraf instead of being killed or kidnapped later in a remote place in Iraq. I hope in future we will not have to blame the United Nations and especially UNAMI for helping and assisting the new dictator of Iraq, Maliki, to commit a crime against humanity. We have one month to go. Within the next four weeks, we know now from intelligence from inside Iraq, we know that the Iraqi military, together with battalions of Nuri al-Maliki's own military forces, will mass outside Camp Ashraf and launch a vicious attack. And we are told all the time by the UN and the EU that we must trust these people's safety to the Iraqi authorities. The Iraqi authorities who twice before have mounted massacres on Camp Ashraf. That we must trust the Iraqi government when they tell us they will respect the dignity and human rights of the people in Ashraf. The human rights of the people which has been abused for the past three years by 300 loudspeakers blaring at massive decibel levels, day and night threats and propaganda. The dignity of these people which we are told the Iraqi government will respect, who have denied access to medicine, to fuel for the camp, and allowed people sick and wounded to die in agony because of the denial of access of medicines and doctors. This is the Iraqi government that we are being told to trust. This is the government we are being told in the future uh, we can hand over safely the 3,400 defenseless residents of Ashraf to their care. Well, you know, I say to the foreign ministers who are meeting in Brussels here tomorrow, and they have Ashraf on the agenda. Wake up! Show that you've got a bit of spine. Stand up against this brutal dictatorship in Iran, which now controls the Iraqi government. Nouri al-Maliki owes his position as Prime Minister of Iraq to the mullahs in Iran. What they tell him to do, he does. And that's why they have ordered the final solution to the Ashraf crisis. Does all of this not smack of lessons from history? Have we not heard all of this before? Now, when we hear from the EU and the UN that we must respect the sovereignty of the Iraqi government, Hitler had sovereignty over the Jews in Nazi Germany. Is this the kind of sovereignty we must respect? For God's sake, EU and UN, wake up, show that you have some spine, some metal, and tell Nuri al-Maliki his deadline for clearing this camp by the end of this year is outrageous. The UNHCR must be given the time and space to register these people as refugees in order that our EU resettlement plan can be put into place and we can evacuate these people to countries of safety. 
Nothing else than that will do. This conference is being held while the mullahs in Iran and the Iraqi government have started the countdown. Their main demand is the forcible relocation of the residents to close Ashraf by 31st of December. This is according to a seven-point agreement between the Iranian regime and the Iraqi government. I have come today to the capital of Europe to ask the European Commission, the Council of the European Union, and its high representative to use their power and good offices to prevent a crime against humanity. Experience shows that Iraqi government's promises cannot be trusted. Only six hours before the massacre of 8 April began, the US embassy officially assured that Iraqi's prime minister had promised the residents that he has no intention of committing violence. Please allow me to summarize here the solution offered by the Iranian resistance and its demands for Camp Ashraf, which is reality, is part of the solution for Iran as well. First, any forcible relocation inside Iraq must be put aside. The illegal and suppressive deadline of 31st December 2011 must be canceled so that the UNHCR's work and the transfer of all residents to third countries is completed. Second, considering the Iraqi government's opposition to the UNHCR refugee status confirmation of the Ashraf resident, the only way is a group determination of the refugee status by the UNHCR. This would allow enough time for individual application to be reviewed. Third, the security of the residents of Camp Ashraf by the Blue Helmet UN forces and the stationing of a UN monitoring team at Camp Ashraf guaranteed by the UN Security Council until the transfer of the last person to third countries. <coughs> Fourth, the international community and especially the member states of the European Union accept any number of ill and wounded residents on an urgent basis. I uh, have spoken to UN High Commissioner Guterres and he is very actively engaged in seeking individual interviews with all 3,400 residents in Camp Ashraf so that they can be determined to be refugees. He is fully aware that there is an imminent threat of a crime against humanity being committed. I think it's very important for those of us in, in the Western world to be consistent in our principles. We here in Europe have seen recently a major military intervention in Libya. And the purpose of that intervention was to prevent a massacre in Benghazi. Well, massacres are massacres wherever they occur. Murders are murders wherever they occur. There is no distinction to be made, in my view, between what was being contemplated by the then regime uh, in Libya, which the West intervened to stop, and what is now being contemplated by the current government in Iraq, which the West so far seems unable to do anything to stop. I think the outcome we must look for from the meeting tomorrow of the uh, European Union uh, foreign ministers is a decision to recommend economic sanctions being imposed against Iraq unless Iraq agrees to extend the deadline for the closure of Camp Ashraf, to allow time for the duly constituted organs of the world community, the United Nations Commission on, on Refugees, to individually intervene and interview each one of the residents. Occasionally, 
as it has been reminded this morning, Iraq's right of sovereignty is used for justifying the come closure deadline, the end of this year. This is a clear misuse of the right and defies the principle of responsibility to protect. Right of sovereignty can never be used to justify the systematic violation of human rights. I remember that Sudan was indeed a sovereign country. And when Christians were massacred in the south of Sudan, this sovereignty was divided in two, and a new state was born. So that was a clear proof that sovereignty can never be more important than human rights and human freedoms. If Iraq were sincerely interested in the evacuation of the Ashraf residents and their departure from Iraq, it could have cooperated with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and with the European Union. But Prime Minister Maliki has clearly shown that he follows the orders of the Iranian regime that seeks the annihilation of the Ashraf residents. When the uh, services of Lady Ashton and the High Representative herself tells us that we must trust the Iraqi government, frankly, I ask them not to insult our intelligence. In view of all this, if Iraq is still intent on the forcible relocation of the Ashraf residents, then it must be made absolutely clear that those Ashraf residents are not at all prepared to be forcibly displaced inside Iraq. If this happens, they will have no other option but to resist. I know them personally, many of them. I've been there and I've had direct contact with them. Some of the very close relatives of very good friends of mine here are in Khan Ashraf. And I can imagine what they are feeling now. But if our governments in Europe, in the United States, are not supporting the rights of the people in Ashraf, it is entirely natural that they would prefer an honorable death than surrender to be killed at a later stage after being tortured and brutally undignified. Given that the Iraqi government is not allowing the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to start verifying the identities of Ashraf residents in order to affirm their individual refugee status, the only way left to prevent a massacre of unarmed and defenseless residents is the general affirmation of Ashraf residents' refugee status by United Nations. They must be declared refugees as a group, not individually. And this is an emergency measure that could be taken by United Nations. And if, and, if, and if this we are facing is not an emergency, then someone must tell me what an emergency is. There is no time to interview them individually, the 3,400. First of all, because they are too many. And second, because Maliki does not allow to do it. So please, for God's sake, use the legal instruments we have at hand. And what legal instrument is, in case of extreme emergency, you declare all of them as a group uh, refugees. And that at least perhaps could stop uh, the Iraqi government. But for God's sake, do something. Because we have been months and months talking and writing letters. The number of letters I have written to Mrs. Ashton, to United Nations, and to all the foreign ministers, probably now, I don't know, there could be a hit like this, you know. So it's enough, do something for God's sake.